What is up, everybody? Welcome to draft season here on That Franchise Guy. I am Marcus Whitman, and I am super excited to bring to you guys the first of many top 10 positional breakdowns for the 2021 NFL Draft. And I am stoked to be starting here with the wide receivers. Man alive, have we gotten just this massive influx of talent in the NFL, the wide receiver position and the passing game in general. It seems like every year these classes are getting better and deeper. Last year's was historic and this, year on, uh, this year's is pretty damn good as well. So with that said, there is a long list of receivers. I've currently scouted and evaluated and put grades on over 30 receivers already. Uh, so there are receivers that I really like that are going to be quality players, if not elite playmakers at the next level, uh, that are not going to make this top 10 list. And there is going to be players that you're wondering, how did that guy not make the top 10 receiver class? Well, I like a lot of receivers in this class. So if they don't make this list, it does not mean that I do not like them as a player. And with that said, if you want to know what I feel about some of these other receivers that did not make this top 10 list, along with hundreds and hundreds of other players in this class. Well, guys, uh, I am in the works of putting together my comprehensive draft board that is available on Patreon. Like I said, I've already got 31 receivers evaluated. There's going to be more to come. I had about 65 receivers graded last year, and that's just the receivers. So the full TFG Draft Insider Package is available on my Patreon. It's patreon.com slash that franchise guy. I also have eight film rooms up already. Uh, more to come every film room Friday. We're posting two film rooms uh, for NFL draft prospects. Uh, and also leading up to the draft, I'm going to have team-specific seven-round mock drafts for all 32 teams in the league. So if you enjoy my draft content, if you enjoy this video and you want to get all of the draft <laughs> intake that you can have, it's going to be available to you on my Patreon. It's patreon.com slash that franchise guy. So without further ado, let's hop into the top 10 here. We're going to start at 10 and work our way up. And this morning on Twitter, I asked, is there anyone in this class that is maybe not on my radar? Someone I need to make sure I watch uh, that could sneak up into this top 10. And it was brought to my attention that I need to check out my number 10 wide receiver now, Jalen Darden out of North Texas. He has some of the most elite quick twitch ability you will ever see. And He's somewhat similar to other small school receivers that have gone second, third round, guys like Deontay Johnson and Anthony Miller, although a different skill set, but reminds me in some ways of just that undersized receiver that probably slipped through the cracks in the recruiting because of his size, because of his frame, but he's got that it factor. He's got that juice. He's got that quickness. And his ability to make guys miss is simply put rare and elite. It is Tavon Austin-esque, the way that he can move with the ball in his hands, but he translates that as a receiver as well. He's a tough dude. He makes some tough catches as well. Now, you are going to be worried about his his frame as far as making contested catches, uh, and he is a smaller guy. He, he could be a guy that deals with some injuries at his size, as we've seen at the re receiver position, but he does do a good job to... Uh, really put himself in, in in angles where he doesn't take a lot of big hits. Uh, so I just, I believe in this player. His game is electric, but it's not just raw talent. Like he, he really does. He runs good routes. He seems to be a very smart player and has that love for the game that's going to help him develop. Uh, and that's why my high comp for him is Tyler Lockett. I see a lot of Tyler Lockett in his game. He is not just Tavon Austin. He's not just a return man that you run jet sweeps with. That is the worst case scenario here. Best case is those skills that he showed at North Texas, getting deep and tracking the ball and um, being a guy that can catch a slant, make a guy miss and take it to the house. That's Tyler Lockett-esque. Uh, so Jalen Darden, second, third round could be a total steal. There's some risk involved, of course, a small school player and he lacks some of that size. Uh, but man, that suddenness is, is one of the most rare traits you'll see. And, and I want a part of that. Uh, on day two of the draft, absolutely. Uh, then number nine here is a very similar player with very similar traits. Uh, it's going to be Rondale Moore out of Purdue. Uh, now, he is a much thicker player than Jalen Darden, uh, and he still brings some of that suddenness to him. I would say Darden is a little bit quicker, but Moore uh, does have a little more size, a little more power to his game. Um, but a lot of the things I said about playmaking, short route running, and that quickness translating to the ability to separate, 
Uh, it, it's all there with Rondell Moore, and his ball skills are also very good for a smaller guy and kind of a Julian Edelman, uh, T.Y. Hilton type of way where it's like he shouldn't be able to make some of the catches he does, but he does. Uh, and what's different about Rondell Moore is his raw pound for pound strength is incredible. Uh, you know, he's he's got videos on the internet about, about his squatting ability with his frame. It's really impressive. Uh, you know, almost like Saquon Barkley ask how much this dude can lift. So really quick, quicker than fast. He's not quite as fast as far as being a vertical threat as I originally anticipated him being. My comp for him is Curtis Samuel, guy that can separate, get the ball in his hands. He's gonna make you miss, he's gonna run through you. Uh, now, the one thing with Jalen Moore that has pushed him down a little bit is availability. Uh, he has not been a player that's been available at Purdue for injuries, and uh, he kind of battled with the whole opt-out situation, which you, you don't want to hold that against him, um, but it does add some uh, just uncertainty to his player eval. And when it comes to his injuries, with his frame, yes, he is a thicker guy, but uh, that frame can lead to some injuries. We've seen it with similar players in the past. And uh, not only do you not know if he's going to be a guy that can play 16 games a season, uh, but uh, it's not just are you playing on Sunday, it's are you playing throughout the week? Are you going through practice? Are you developing your route running? Are you able to watch film or are you stuck in the in the trainer's office, you know, holding ice on your ankle? You know, it, it, availability is the best uh, ability in the NFL. I don't know if that's entirely true, but that's a saying for a reason. It's very relevant. So that is a knock on Rondale Moore, but his explosiveness, if he can stay healthy the next level and be utilized in a creative way early on in his career, this dude's going to be electric. I'm not going to say he's going to be Tyree Hill at the next level, uh, but he's going to he's gonna be a, a player that uh, is definitely on a lot of people's radars, especially defensive coordinators, uh, causing a lot of headaches at the next level. Uh, all right, then we get into a different type of receiver with my number eight receiver here, and that's going to be Seth Williams. Very intriguing, sort of typical boom or bust prospect, which by the way, you guys will see my grades on these players. If you don't know what those numbers, what those metrics mean, uh, head into the description below uh, where I will be detailing my uh, scouting sort of, um, you know, grading scale and describing what these different numbers mean. Uh, so definitely go check that out if you don't know what exactly this is, but uh, Seth Williams in the boom or bust category, which is very fitting for him. Think the mold of a, a DJ Shark, a uh, Chase Claypool coming out as this big bodied vertical freak uh, with really nice speed. Now, this is a very unfortunate pre-draft process where workout grades are, let's just say, going to be few and far between. And the ones that we do get it's up in the air right now on on how uh, verified and uh, honest those are going to be. Uh, pro day numbers, they say, take about a half second off of 40 time of any pro day just to be safe because a lot of those times it's, it's agents, like the player's agents doing the clocking. It's the coaches who have a bias towards the player uh, to get those numbers up. Now, hopefully they can get that process figured out. But uh, you know, you can go off the eye test for a lot of these players, you know, guys, we just talked about Rondale Moore, Jalen Darden, I have no question, like their quickness is exceptional. I don't really care what their testing scores are. The tape tells me that Seth Williams, I do see that deep speed, but he is the kind of player that a 40 time is going to be much more important. You know, DJ Chark, Chase Claypool, there's no chance on God's green earth that those guys are second round picks if they don't run the 40 times that they do. Uh, so it does matter. Uh, you can look at the tape. You can say, I get excited about his size and strength and explosiveness, his release. He just flies off the ball. He's got that vertical speed. Uh, but there is just that little hidden part in there as far as how fast is he truly you would love to get a combine recorded 40 time from seth williams and we're just not going to get that uh so it's it's a great look at the type of prospect that the 2021 draft process is going to make him a very more polarizing player some guys are going to say we don't trust the 40 time we're going to have a fourth round grade on seth williams some people are going to be like we think this dude is explosive i personally think he could record something in the four threes uh, which definitely puts him in that Chase Claypool and um, uh, DJ Chark type of mold as the type of player he is. He's got great ball skills, super fast, long, powerful receiver. I believe in the guy. Uh, it's just a little bit more of a boomer bust pick there with Seth Williams, uh, who I right now have a second round grade on. Uh, then the next one 
uh, it, it's fun to see the different types of valuations here. Uh, and it just goes to show you that a lot of these guys, it's just gonna come down to scheme fit and sort of team need. You know, last year I, I didn't have Debo, uh, not Debo, uh, Brandon Ayuk as a top 10 receiver for me. Uh, and uh, the second the 49ers took him, I was like, yeah, I mean, I had a, I had a third round grade on Brandon Ayuk, but he's gonna play like a superstar there for the Niners because it's just such a great fit for what they need. So, you know, it is something to keep in mind when you look at these uh, sort of profiles and, and scheme fits and all this stuff, which again is all detailed in the description below. You'll see that scheme fit right there. But anyway, this next player might be the highest floor player, the safest pick of the top 10 receivers here. And that's Tylen Wallace uh, out of Oklahoma State. Uh, my comp for him originally was Darius Slayton as that perimeter player who can be a vertical threat, effective on slants, your kind of number two perimeter receiver, either the second or third target in your offense, someone that has that deep speed that's going to keep safeties and defensive coordinators honest, but is effective enough in the short game on simple route concepts like slants, curls, comebacks, uh, even in the screen game a little bit, uh, guys that you got to keep an eye on in the short game as well. Uh, so that's really what I had on Tylen Wallace, but it came out at the Senior Bowl and actually looked a lot thicker than he did uh, at the Oklahoma State tape that I watched. And I actually like that about him. And I've since changed my comp on him, ironically, to another Oklahoma State receiver in James Washington, who is the same type of receiver as Darius Slayton, a number two, number three perimeter receiver, do the types of routes that I talked about, but he brings a much more physical element, uh, which is gonna help J um, Tylen Wallace in his release, and it's gonna help him win contested catches. And from what I saw at the Senior Bowl, it did not compromise his speed. Uh, so I really like Tylen Wallace. I feel very safe in what you're getting. I find it unlikely that he's ever gonna be a true number one receiver, and that's probably gonna keep him out of the first round. I don't think he has elite speed. He definitely doesn't have great quickness. He's not a superb route runner, but he's got that speed. He's got excellent ball skills. He run blocks, he's tough. He was productive in college. I feel very confident in Tylen Wallace in the second round uh, to be a day one starter on the perimeter for any scheme, really. Um, and then you've got uh, number six here, and this might be the most uh, controversial talking point on this list. It's gonna be Kadarius Tony at number six. And I say that because he is quite possibly the biggest love child of the uh, draft Twitter universe at the moment. He is all the rage and, you know, he he is exciting. Again, he is the number six receiver here in a class that I find to be a remarkable receiver class. So I want to make it very clear that I like uh, Kadarius Tony a lot. My pro comp for him is Deontay Johnson, who was one of my favorite receivers several years ago. Uh, but that said, I do think that his long speed and his upside as a vertical threat is being slightly overrated by your draft Twitter out there. And a lot of people are putting him at wide receiver four inside the top 20 of drafts. I'm just not there yet. I had some uh, concerns coming into the Senior Bowl about A, his long speed, and B, his ability to come down with contested catches consistently at his frame. He does have relative to his frame, good ball tracking ability. Um, but I do see him as a player that is much more of a slot, short to intermediate playmaker, a guy that is excellent with the ball in his hands. And I, I love those, those traits he has. His foot speed and his ability to separate, it, it's remarkable. And there's a reason he's above uh, Rondale Moore and Jalen Darden in this class. But as you're evaluating Kadarius Tony, and as you're doing these mock drafts and, and putting him in these different teams, I do challenge you to question what is the biggest difference between Kadarius Tony and, say, Rondale Moore and Jalen Darden? Is it worth grabbing Kadarius Tony with the 15th pick, for example, uh, when you could maybe get a tackle or a cornerback or something like that, and then maybe get a Rondale Moore or Jalen Darden in the second round? It's just something to think about um, because I don't think that Kadarius Tony has elite speed. I think he's got good speed. I think he can uh, make some good plays as a vertical threat, especially out of the slot uh, where he's going to see some of those slot corners that don't have some of that long speed just like him. Uh, but I, I do really like Kadarius Tony for all of the reasons that uh, many of you guys are aware of. His, his short route running is remarkable. He will shake you off the ball, but 
Uh, again, the contested catch ability, the long speed, his release against longer corners. I do think he's going to be a uh, pigeonholed to be more of that slot receiver. And there's always going to be a lack of upside uh, with that. And, and also not so much lack of upside, but kind of like I mentioned, uh, supply and demand. There's a lot of receivers of the mold of Kadarius Tony. He might be one of the best of that mold. Uh, but it's just something to think about with Kadarius Tony and why I come in just a little bit lower on him. Uh, but I do really like him. Uh, and then my number five receiver is going to be Terrace Marshall. And again, think back to what I said about Brandon Ayuk. You know, it's going to come down to scheme fit, team needs, stylistic preference. I really like Kadarius Tony. I really like Terrace Marshall. They're completely different players. It's almost uh, dumb to me to rank these guys together in a lot of ways because it just comes down to what kind of receiver do you need. Uh, so Terrace Marshall is much more of your traditional boundary receiver. My comparison for him is Devontae Parker just a really well-rounded big-bodied receiver and a really nice athlete he runs good routes at his size he's got uh, some of the best release in this class he uh, has the frame and toughness to come down with really tough catches he's got the speed to be uh, a long threat on the outside and the interesting with Terrace Marshall to me is he is a little more on the raw side he really only had one season as a full-time starter and it was on an offense that really got picked apart after that um, championship season. Uh, so, you know, he was the number uh, three receiver in that explosive championship offense. And then even in his uh, big season at LSU, this junior season, they did the same thing with him that they did with Justin Jefferson, kicked him inside, asked him to play a little more slot. And he showed some nice tools as far as short route running uh, and a guy that can have some shake. And if that translated in the slot, it's absolutely going to translate on the outside, especially if he continues to develop that technique. Now, he is a little more of a, I don't want to say boomer bust prospect, but he does have more growth to do. Uh, but if you're looking for that traditional perimeter receiver that can be a deep threat, uh, bring you some of that size, that's going to be Terrace Marshall. So um, again, comes down to preference. My grade on Marshall and Tony is, is extremely tight there. Uh, I think in my, my latest mock draft, I actually, and that's a what I would do mock draft, I actually took Kadarius Tony ahead of Terrace Marshall just because of the way the team needs and the draft board played out. So, um, you know, I like both those players a lot. And then we got Rash uh, Rashad Bateman at number four. He is a pro's pro. He's never going to be the fastest guy on the team. He's never going to be the fastest guy in the field. Uh, but he is going to be one of those, uh, at least from what I can tell, first one in, last one out types of dudes. He fits the profile of receivers like Keenan Allen, Devontae Adams, Michael Thomas, Tyler Boyd, guys that were, you know, second round picks, uh, but really showed that toughness, that route running ability that developed over time, uh, put the time in, in the, in the film room to understand where to sit down in zone coverage. Just a tough pros pro and I feel very safe about Rashad Bateman. He had some drops in there that you do hope that he can he can weed out. Um, but with the route running he shows, with the toughness he shows, coming down with tough catches over the middle, the consistency he put up uh, at Minnesota, I just I have very few doubts that those drops are going to plague him at the next level. Uh, so I, I really like Rashad Bateman. He's somewhere between Tyler Boyd, Michael Thomas, Keenan Allen, Devontae Adams. Uh, as a player as far as how he's going to translate stylistically uh, and he also has right there with Devontae Smith the best release in this class you try to press this guy he's got a variety of skill sets he's got long arms and quick feet to get off press which is a skill that absolutely translates uh, at the next level he's kind of just a better version of Tyler Johnson who came out of Minnesota and was a total steal for the Bucks in the fifth round making great catches in the NFC championship game so really like Rashad Bateman uh, as more of a safer option uh, I mocked him to Miami in my last mock draft uh, make sure if you guys are, are new to the channel by, by the way make sure you subscribe so uh, you don't miss the the next mock draft that'll be out on Monday um, but then my number three receiver is gonna be Jalen Waddle. And I like Jalen Waddle as much as the next guy. There's very few reasons he can't translate as an elite deep threat at the next level. He's kind of next in line as the John Ross and Henry Ruggs of, you know, uh, jaw-dropping speed and vertical ability. Uh, go back to like Brandon Cooks. So my, my low comp for him is Brandon Cooks. My high comp is Tyreek Hill. I mean, there is a chance that, that he can be that difference-making athlete. You know, Tyreek Hill is like, absolute bizarre best case scenario he ends up with 
you know, I don't know, Herbert, Rodgers, maybe Mahomes, you know, that's not going to happen. But you, you get the point. Like, you need to pair speed like this with an accurate vertical passer like the Chiefs did with Hill and Mahomes. Um, but the reality is the track record of players like this can be hit or miss. That speed does come at a cost of a thinner frame. You know, Deshaun Jackson, John Ross, uh, Brandon Cooks, and uh, Jalen Rieger. Some of these guys like Jalen Waddle have had a hard time staying healthy because of that frame. That speed comes at a cost. And just like we talked about with Rondale Moore, if you can't stay on the field, it's not just you aren't there on Sundays, it's there, you're not there Monday through Friday uh, putting in practice against starting NFL corners, working on your route running. Uh, it's harder to put in that film room because you're so worried about getting that ankle healthy for Sunday. Uh, so it can slow down the development of some of these guys. So there is more of a boomer bust aspect in there with Jalen Waddle that when you take him, you've got to be prepared for it not to work out. But on film, this dude is special, man. He is absurdly fast. He runs great routes. One thing that I like about him more than uh, Henry Ruggs last year, which by the way, I do like him more than Henry Ruggs last year, is even if his speed isn't quite the same uh, as far as long speed, his release is much more smooth. It tells me that he understands the importance of being able to beat the really uh, beat press. Now he didn't see a lot of press, but his foot speed is much better than Ruggs. I thought Ruggs was much more of a straight line dude, whereas Waddle's got some more of that burst and shiftiness that's going to show up in his release. It's something that's made Tyreek Hill very special is he can get off press. Uh, so I do like Jalen Waddle. He's got to stay healthy at the next level. Uh, but I wouldn't be stunned if some team took him as the number one receiver in this class because there's a reason that you draft that speed is because if it works out, you're getting a game wrecking player like a, again, like a Tyree Kill. He's, he's probably not going to be as good as Tyree Kill, but man, there are reasons to believe he could be. So Jalen Waddle, absolutely an intriguing player. Uh, but I do like the uh, security of these top two receivers better. So Devonta Smith is going to be my number two receiver. Uh, you are splitting hairs with him and Jamar Chase. It is a matter of preference. Um, my comp for Devonta Smith is Stefan Diggs. Think polish, release, run after catch ability, ability to elevate and attack the football when the ball's in the air. Uh, just a well-rounded, smooth receiver. You know, he's not an elite athlete, but he's a very good athlete. He's definitely a plus athlete. I think his speed is being slightly underrated as a matter of fact, uh, that route run and that release, like I said, it, it is phenomenal. Now, he has a smaller frame. Uh, it, it, it could potentially limit his upside as, as far as playing physical, as far as staying healthy. It's something to keep an eye on. It might be the difference maker. It, it definitely is the difference maker to me between him and Jamar Chase. But again, a matter of preference because Jamar Chase is going to be num my number one receiver here. Chase, a very different player. He's built. He's tough. He's nasty. He doesn't have the quickness that Devontae Smith does, and he might not be the type of separate uh, separator that Devontae Smith is. But that said, it, Jamar Chase, the second he gets drafted, is going to be probably, let's just say, the third best run after catch receiver in the NFL. And he has a chance to be number one. I would say A.J. Brown and Debo Samuel, it's going to be tough to beat what they're doing. Uh, but my comp for him is Allen Robinson before the catch and Debo Samuel after the catch. The other thing here is with Jamar Chase is, yes, I do not think the second he gets drafted, he's going to be as good of a route runner as Devontae Smith, but it's not like he's a bad route runner. And he's only 20 years old, and we only really got to see one year of Jamar Chase. And I do believe in him. I, I think he said, you know what? I'm a, I'm ready to be a pro. I don't need to play in 2020. I don't need to mess around with this whole COVID situation. Uh, if I did play, I would have taken the world by storm. But also my quarterback was gone. Why would I risk uh, not getting the, the types of targets that I got when Joe Burrow was my guy? So uh, I'm willing to rewind the clock. I do think there's a little bit of recency bias with, with the people that have Devontae Smith over Jamar Chase because Jamar Chase, if he were to come out last year, I have an extremely difficult time seeing him not being a top four, top five pick in that draft. Like he probably would have been the third best player in that class uh, after after Burrow and uh, Chase Young. So yes, there's some aspects of can he rekindle that fire? Can he be the same guy? Uh, but man, it's it's tight. I just lean Jamar Chase. Uh, but if you if you lean Devontae Smith, I'm honestly not going to hold it against you either because there's a good chance he's going to be the better separator. Uh, but I think Jamar Chase is going to have uh, a little more consistency to his game 
uh, and that physicality is, is going to show up a lot as well. Uh, so there is the top 10 receivers of the 2021 NFL Draft. If you guys enjoyed, if there's a player that I did not mention here, I promise you I've evaluated him. And if I haven't, I'm going to get there very soon. Uh, so if you want my opinion on the other receivers in this class, head over to Patreon's patreon.com slash that franchise guy and get access to my full draft board. It's all right there. Uh, so go check that out. Please do hit that like button down below if you enjoyed. Uh, and we'll be back on Monday for my next Mock Draft Monday. Appreciate you guys for watching. Cheers, and we'll see you for the next one. Peace out.